Right, hi, hello. Webinar today. Um, I'm Fleur, I'm the Marketing Manager here at Prodpad and here with me today is Andrea, our Customer Experience Manager. She's going to talk to you today about how to run a successful product presentation, which should hopefully make public speaking that little bit less, oh, one, I'll try that again, um, which should hopefully make public speaking that little bit less scary and also give you all the tools to run a successful meeting from start to finish and also how not to stumble over your words like I am. Um, and just some quick housekeep housekeeping before Andrea gets stuck into the webinar. Firstly, this is recorded and will be sent out early next week. Um, we're not formal, so if you have a question, just pop it in the questions tab at any point and we will cover them all at, at the end for the Q&A. We're also running polls throughout, so please do get your votes in. And right, over to you, Andrea. Thank you, Fleur. Um, and hey, everyone. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, then, uh, giving a product presentation is definitely not an easy thing to do. You have to convince an entire room of people that they should listen to you. That's why it's important for you to be able to give a persuasive product presentation in which you show both your understanding of the problems that need to be solved while still upholding the product vision. If all of this sounds wonderfully terrifying, you're not alone. The first point I want to make, which Fleur helped me with today, is that it's okay for you to be nervous. It happens. We're nervous all the time when we have to do these webinars. Uh, and it's totally okay and acceptable. Uh, I may not be able to take your nerves away with a single webinar, but I can definitely give you some pointers to make sure that you absolutely nail your next product presentation. Uh, of course, worrying about being nervous uh, is going to happen. Uh, people always worry about how nervous they're going to be before they even uh, decide what they're going to talk about. And that's just going to lead to a whole nervous loop thing. Um, I don't enjoy public speaking myself. And for a really long time, I actually uh, would refuse to do webinars and demos. And now I do them all the time. We have one at least every other week. Uh, a few things that I have found that help me in this area are, uh, first of all, meditating. I know it sounds like an absolute total cliche, and Fleur is laughing at me right now as I say that, but it actually does work. Um, the second thing I can recommend is practice. Um, I know it goes without saying, uh, but practice uh, your presentation as many times as you can, uh, and eventually you'll be able to do it without even thinking about what it is that you're saying. It's just going to flow. Uh, the third thing I would recommend is have notes with you. Uh, it's okay for you to have notes, whether they be cards, uh, presentation notes, a Google Doc, any cues that you have to read out of. Uh, it's always better to be overly prepared than underprepared. Uh, lastly, if you like to practice uh, your public speaking in general, uh, I would absolutely recommend that you join your local Toastmasters. Um, that would be toastmasters.com uh, if you, uh, you know, get on the Google and just type Toastmasters, I'm sure you'll find it as well. Uh, it's a great community of people where you can get tips from others and they'll talk to you about um, you know, how to present yourself, how to stand, how to speak, how to walk. Uh, and it's a great way to, to practice um, some of those skills. Now, a lot has said about uh, how to hold a productive meeting, but the folks at 37 Signals, who are the makers of Basecamp, by the way, have boiled it down to three points. Uh, first of all, keep it short. Use a timer if you have to, to get people to respect timeframes. Uh, second is have an agenda. And third is invite as few people as possible. To keep the meeting short and to the point, state the focus and desired outcomes of your meeting beforehand. You might want to set a quick email ahead of the meeting with these details, or just write it down as part of your calendar invite. You might want to take this opportunity to write down some talking points as well uh, that you will be covering during your discussion. If you're open to collecting suggestions uh, from the attendees of the meeting, uh, set a deadline for that as well. Otherwise, uh, keep the meeting about what you're presenting and not about issues that can be discussed after the meeting. Make it clear what you will be presenting, what is expected from the audience and what they can expect from you. This way, you can control uh, the meeting from the start and avoid what everybody wants to avoid, tangents. Uh, you don't want to be that person or have that person that talks on for like 20 minutes about something that you didn't have to talk about in the first place. That's what I mean. <laughs> uh, we actually do this a lot of prop at uh, quite a bit, not tangents, but keeping things organized, um, especially when it comes to uh, marketing projects. So we have a deadline for content changes uh, and when feedback can be pitched. We have another deadline for when design changes can be pitched. Uh, and then once we send it all off to be implemented, then no more feedback um, is going to be taken in. I know that sounds a little bit harsh, uh, but it actually has kept us uh, pretty organized and pretty on the ball about new changes that we make. 
Um, guess what? Uh, if you're doubting yourself, uh, nobody actually needs to know. Uh, keep eye contact, speak calmly, and pause between sentences for a little dramatic effect if you have to. Uh, you absolutely don't need to rush through anything. Uh, remember that this is your meeting and you are the one that's in control. Uh, most importantly, don't apologize for things that you don't know or if there's any lack of understanding or holes um, in, in what you're presenting. Uh, your role as a product manager overall doesn't actually require you to know everything. Uh, it's as much your job to discover um, feedback and new ideas and anything that your team can bring on to the rest of the team and the rest of the product. Uh, so see this more as an advantage rather than a weakness. Um, again, feedback is always feedback. During a product presentation, uh, you are there to talk about the product vision, direction, and most importantly, talk about solving problems. Uh, consider starting your meeting off with a quick run through of your product canvas if you have one, uh, so you can remind your audience of uh, those key details. If you don't know what a product canvas is, don't worry about it. Uh, we're gonna talk about it next. Uh, so it's, uh, it's on the screen right now. It talks about what your vision is, what your objectives are, and what your description is. Uh, and that just uh, makes it really handy for everyone to, uh, to understand uh, where it is that the conversation is going and where your, uh, your product is going. Uh, this is very similar to Roman Pitchler's business model canvas, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, and so just kind of highlight how important this, um, this is, there's a story that I always like to tell. Um, it's a bit of a fun fact <laughs> or a fun story. Uh, now, when I first moved to, to London, I was so desperate for a job that I took this job I, I didn't really want and I didn't really ask a whole lot of questions, but they gave me a visa, so I took it. Uh, kind of cheeky like that. But on my first actual meeting with, uh, with the team, uh, I sat down with the CEO and the project manager at the time, and I asked them both to tell me what their product vision was and what the product did from their own point of view, with their own words, because I needed to be able to tell other people this. So I kind of want to start understanding things. Um, so the CEO gives me, you know, this 20 minute speech about how he's going to change the world. It was all very exciting. And then he steps out, he has a meeting, but as soon as he closes the door, I hear this click and the project manager looks at me and goes, yeah, that's not it. And that was really scary because I'm then stuck with this team where the CEO has a particular vision, but what they're delivering is an entire other thing. So it's always really, really important to make sure that your team is aligned. Uh, once you've presented your product vision, switch it over to your product roadmap uh, so that you can look a little bit deeper into your product strategy. Uh, a product roadmap makes it easy to communicate your high-level priorities without losing your audience. You can talk about objectives uh, and goals using colors like we have here uh, to highlight uh, these areas of importance. And most importantly, it's going to help build transparency. You can use these documents um, as your opportunity to establish user problems and the bigger picture before jumping into a discussion around features. So you can ask, uh, answer things like uh, which features uh, have been prioritized over others, which objectives you expect as a team um, to meet, uh, and what problems need to be urgently solved. As you drill down uh, further into these details of, of each card that you have, you can move into discussing specific features. Uh, features should come last in your product presentation because, as we all know, everyone's going to have an opinion on what features should be built and what they should look like without really taking the time uh, to think about why. But since you've hopefully at this point framed your presentation around a set of problems to be solved and you've presented your product vision, you can narrow the conversation down around uh, those features uh, to a manageable scope. Uh, now, just because you give a product presentation, it doesn't mean it's all set in stone. It's always important to be flexible. Uh, make sure that you're taking in feedback uh, and, and are taking those suggestions in. And don't make this seem like it's an unchangeable situation because that's just going to make everyone unhappy. Uh, the most effective product teams keep the conversation open to everyone at the company. So be, make sure that you're encouraging this um, and that you're assigning some sort of dedicated channel to continue taking in this feedback. Of course, before you let everyone go, make sure that you say thank you. Uh, don't rush people out the door. You don't want to seem rude. Um, answer any questions if you can. Again, if there's any follow-ups, uh, make sure that you follow up after. Um, as a pro tip, um, remember to send a summary of what you've talked about uh, with some meeting notes. Uh, so summarize what, we talk, what was talked about and some key actions to follow up after discussions. Um, so at this point, we've really talked about how you're going to present things and, and 
some key tips, um, assuming everything goes right. Uh, but as we know with technology, things don't always go right. Um, so let's just very briefly talk about some things that could go wrong and how to prepare for those things. Uh, unfortunately, Murphy's Law is a thing. Uh, and, you know, anything that could go wrong will go wrong. So, uh, especially when it comes to tech. So the first thing is don't panic. Uh, smile, smile through it if you can. Uh, if you start panicking, you're going to make your audience a little bit uncomfortable. But if you smile and you seem pretty confident, then they'll probably be a little bit more forgiving and they're going to understand that some of these tech issues are not your fault because they're really not. Uh, now, as we know also when dealing with Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi might go down. So if you can um, have a hotspot uh, as a backup, just in case, you can also have uh, a USB or just make sure that your presentation is saved to your drive. Um, we can always rely on Google uh, Google Drive, especially if you know the Wi-Fi goes down. Um, if like ProdPat, your team is constantly pushing out updates, uh, make sure that you warn your development team beforehand. Uh, the last thing you want is something going wrong mid-presentation. Uh, especially if you're demoing, uh, you know, a particular feature, a new set of features. Um, so kind of the last thing you want is something going wrong then. Uh, if people are dialing in, uh, make sure uh, you make it easy for them. Uh, it's always, uh, I think, easy to forget that we all have different setups and we work with different technologies uh, and other people may not be using the same setup as you do. So to prevent that awful, awkward first 20 minutes where people try to figure out how to get into the call, they've already wasted, um, you know, quite a bit of time make sure that you keep everyone involved. Or sorry, up to date, not involved, but also involved. <laughs> and the last point for today is uh, your audience is going to uh, feel a little bit more at ease if you speak calmly. Um, for those of us who suffer from nerves, like myself, your throat might choke up. So make sure that you have a, a glass of water next to you, as Fleur does right in front of me right now, which is fantastic. Um, and if you're accident prone like we are, make sure that it's far away enough from your computer. You don't want to spill it on your computer. You don't want to spill it on other people. Um, again, we speak from experience, just in case. <laughs> and that is all on my end. So if you guys have any questions. Um, I've actually got a really nice one here. Um, so how did you deal with the CEO and your anecdote? Did they ever truly understand the customer pain points their product was hopefully solving? Um, and what actions did you take to bring that change about? Awesome question. So, so I did have a quick, um, you know, after the project manager said that, my answer was, okay, well, so can you tell me what your two products did? Because they actually, turns out they had two products, not one. And my first um, reaction after just hearing, you know, the pain points and what they were doing. I was just like, so why don't you combine them into one? And this guy's eyes just like lit up and he looked at me and he's like, oh my God, why didn't we think of that? Luckily for me, um, my journey with that company ended about three days later because Jana, um, CEO of ProdPad, ended up offering me a job. <laughs> so sadly there wasn't much I could do, uh, but I did leave uh, the project manager with, you know, some feedback as to things he could do and, you know, hopefully they did end up combining these two products into one just to make it a, a better situation for everyone. Um, I don't know what happened after that, I'm afraid. I, I really wish, part of me wishes I had stayed to help them. Part of me is very glad I didn't. Okay, cool. Um, I have some more questions. Um, what do I do when people ask me a question I don't know the answer to? Uh, be honest. Um, say that you have the answers to the question, uh, but write it down and let them know you will follow up. And most importantly, do follow up. Uh, make whoever it is has the answer to the question. Um, if you must see, see them on a thread or just say, you know, I spoke to so and so and here's the answer to your question. Um, so like I said, it's okay for you to not know. Just make sure that you find a way to follow up. I've got another funny one here. How's Jack? Jana is great. Um, I've seen her for the first time today in like a week. And uh, for anyone in New York, she's going to be in New York next week. So if you want to catch up, let us know. We'll get. Okay, cool. Um, how do, what do I do when people start going on tangents? What's a good way to pull it around with that? Um, I honestly, sometimes you have to be a little bit mean, I think. Just, I think, kindly remind people that, 
you know, maybe the things that they're bringing up are better posed uh, in a different meeting or, you know, in a different situation. Try to reel it back into, you know, what you're actually talking about, uh, because it is very, very easy uh, to go into a tangent. What we like to do with PropPad is ask, OK, but what problem are we trying to solve by discussing this right now? Um, and more often than not, we'll find ourselves, um, once somebody asks that question, realizing that we are going off on a tangent. So if you kind of want to do it you know, kindly, just ask, so what problem are you trying to solve? It kind of seems like this discussion um, might be better to have at another time. Um, and again, make sure that you create that time and that space to talk about these other issues. OK, um, I actually have a question. Um, I know that as a marketer, I annoy product managers and normally everyone else in the team. Um, so how often would you say is the right amount of time to have meetings with the team to show them the vision so that you don't have the opportunities for these tangents and, and people like me go, yeah, but what about this thing that I've come up with that's really, really good and I can do this amazing campaign about and I want to take all the dev time to do things I feel like now we're having a team discussion in front of everyone. <laughs> How embarrassing. Um, that is an awesome question. I, I, I don't even know how to really answer that. Um, I think it's important to always be having these discussions in general. Uh, and if dev resources one way or another, make sure that you highlight why. Because I think where, where a lot of teams fail is that, say, salespeople or marketing people or support people saying, I need help with this, but then not really stating what the problem is and what the benefit of that is as well. And you know, having been a product manager myself and, and working really closely with developers, a lot of developers don't get to understand that human side or that business side of things as to why things are important or how this is going to affect your customers and they're just building stuff. Um, so I think creating that human connection is really important. Um, as to how often, how often do we do it here? Like at least every two or three months, we sit down as a team and just make sure that we're reviewing because things change really, really quickly at PropPad. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but we actually release twice a week, which is very, very fast. Um, and so our roadmap is constantly being updated. Things are constantly changing. Um, and me as customer experience, working so closely with product, and also working closely with Fleur, we have to make sure that all of our objectives are aligned. Um, and I think um, we've actually recently done this and we are combining our roadmaps and making sure that instead of having separate roadmap, seems like a no brainer, right? Um, we have a single roadmap that we're all using and you know working towards the same objectives as opposed to having these separate objectives for the product versus marketing and success and sales. Um, so making sure your objectives are aligned and constantly talking about it and, and making sure that there's a human connection between business and dev is really important. I really hope that answers your question, Fleur. I'm happy to take this on another. Well, um, I have a, another couple of questions that have come through. Um, can you suggest and visual activity to align and rally senior stakeholders behind the product vision and the roadmap? Um, those removed from the day-to-day. -day. We have something called the product tree game. Um, I hope Fleur right now is, she is looking it up um, and sending you the, uh, the blog post that we wrote about it um, alongside the template. So there's this thing called the product tree game. I'll try to summarize it really quickly. We're basically get everybody uh, in a room. If everybody's too much, try to get some key stakeholders of every team um, and try to talk about um, you know, what objectives are important, what features are important. Um, and as these issues start coming up um, on this tree, it's literally a tree, um, and each item is posted. So the items on the trunk of the tree are the items that are considered the most important, the most imminent, so to speak. And as they diverge into the branches, uh, those are the things that are sort of a little bit more removed, um, as we call them now or later within the roadmap. Um, and it's a really great way of getting everyone aligned and understanding sort of what some of the issues are, but it also requires the entire group of people to actually discuss things and talk about things as a group uh, and make those compromises and saying, you know, if we choose to put this feature, let's say, at the bottom of the tree at the trunk, then we may have to sacrifice this other feature. Um, and it's like I said, it's a really, really interesting way of, um, of getting everyone to talk about things, um, you know, in, in this single great um, opportunity. 
Okay, I have one here that I think will probably be, uh, will take off like back to you on, but um, can you share some guidance helping me sell ProdPad to internal stakeholders? Absolutely can. I don't know who asked that. <laughs> we absolutely can. Uh, but yeah, I think that definitely uh, we can uh, we can take that offline and we'll put you in touch with Liz, um, who can give you some pointers. And I think Fleur is just typing a couple things. Okay, um, and then uh, another person has said the product two game is the best. I've used it uh, loads of times. And it's crazy how people open up when things are gamified. So they would highly recommend it. So yeah, guys, the link is in the questions tab. So if you want to have a look, please do. Um, and then I've got one more question here. Uh, in the B2B world, uh, the person paying for your product is different from the end user. Do you have any suggestions on how we can keep both camps aligned? Oh dear. Um... I, there, there's sort of a lot of follow-up questions that can come after that. Like, do you have any exposure to those people's um, customers? Do you get any feedback directly from them? Um, or does it go through a silo, like from the end, you, the end users to you? Um, I think it's, it's um, what would definitely help is having those different persona types um, and understanding those different persona types. Um, and regardless of maybe how or where you're getting that feedback from, making sure that you have and understand those different types of personas so that when you are building towards those objectives, you have you know the, that equal work um, or you're you're targeting or balancing the work out properly. So you say, okay, well, these set of features will help this persona, which might be your B2B, or these set of features features will actually benefit our users' users. Um, and we do that internally. Um, we have quite a few interesting personas um, that we've set up ourselves and they help us do everything from designing a marketing page to our onboarding to you know different experiences in the application so i think that's uh, a, a place where personas would come in i actually have a bit to add to that as well um in quite a lot of my roles in the past i've worked in it's like a kind of b to b to c uh, situation. So uh, I found a lot of time to work with the product managers. So um, I actually went to South Korea for 10 days and like worked with them on what would be the, the marketing perspective of building personas so that from the get-go it was built in to sell it into the salespeople um, or to sell it into the companies that we were selling it to. So it's like it was uh, so that was quite useful, I think, internally at that company. Um, and also just, I think, getting the feedback from your sales team and from your marketing team, from how people are responding to blog content or social or how they're doing in the sales room um, and, and seeing where the friction is there. Because quite a lot of the times you don't really need to pivot the feature, but it's just how you talk about it so that people are more willing to open um, their purses. Um, so that's my two cents on that. Um, and one of the audience has actually said that they're also in B2B and have to compromise our product to appease the purse holder rather than focusing on the user. So they're feeling that pain too. Um, and now I have one more question. Uh, how do you manage motivation of dev team with changing priorities? Well, I don't myself, <laughs> uh, but I can talk about some of the experiences that we've had um, here. We actually just had a team offsite. Um, and speaking of product percent, we all had to run meetings. Um, you know, again, everybody gets nervous. People go off on tangents. So it was really interesting to be able to give this presentation after that experience. Um, I think again, it's really important to to get everyone involved in things like the product tree game. It's really important to share your um, your roadmap with everyone, and not just go these are the things that we're working on, but these are the things that we're working on because, and these are the priorities that we're changing you know, or, or reprioritizing because, um, and it's important to get everybody involved, not just, you know, product or not just product and marketing, but product and marketing and dev and sales, which is what we did. We got absolutely everybody involved and everybody asking questions and everybody discussing things like onboarding. Um, how do we retarget onboarding? Um, how do we retarget certain features that we're working on? How do we, you know, 
and not just how, but why this is important. Um, and everybody had a voice, everybody had a chance to speak and share their thoughts and share their experiences. Um, and that just, at the end of the day, is going to help you build um, a better product. So I hope. Cool, sorry about that. I was typing um, a reply. Uh, so the next one is, it's very interesting how Podpad is focusing on building a B2B community using webinars and Slack, um, a topic which we presented a few weeks ago, and you can find the recording on the blog if you want to have a look. Um, but the question is, how are you guys brainstorming new ideas um, like uh, and coming up with topics for the webinar series? And actually, you reminded me, and I've just turned on the poll for what you guys want to hear next. Uh, which is one of the ways we do it. Um, yeah, we mostly just talk to people. <laughs> uh, the other, which um, kind of loops back to what I said at the beginning, is make sure that you share your product vision and the items that um, your roadmap contains and what objectives you're, you're heading towards. Um, so when we kicked off this year and Fleur officially um, you know, came on board, we made the, um, I want to say, executive decision, quote unquote, that everything we did uh, would link back to what the product was doing. So if we're working on a new feature, then we talk about that new feature and we talk about it from an onboarding perspective. We talk about it, we talk about it in the community. We talk about it in Slack. We talk about Slack as a community. We talk about it in webinars. We talk about it in a newsletter. We talk about it in blog posts. So all of our efforts will align with the product as well, uh, which has massively changed things for us. So. Uh, when we wrote about, let's say, I think it was Jira, um, we made sure that we um, had a webinar and, you know, we, we aligned all of our efforts. Same with Slack. Um, we knew we wanted to talk about how much Slack had helped us. So we made sure that we had a blog post and a new marketing page and a webinar and like all these things that just really aligned with each other. And that helps the entire team uh, make sure that First of all, we're aligning our goals, but making sure that our objectives are clear and that we're meeting those objectives and not just from here's the product and what it's doing, but here's the product, what it's doing and what the objectives are for the team and how all of us can help. I totally agree. I think it's really nice as well to share how we do things um, Like we all want to Google how to do this. So if there's a webinar that we can do to help people um, learn from what we've learned and potential mistakes or uh, different things that slowed us down. That's what we like to share. Um, and I have one more question that's come through. Um, how do you adjust product vision with the reality of developers? A high level roadmap often makes it easy to forget about all the internal implementation um, and difficulties that make certain things hard to do or easier done in a certain order or simply have um, an unclear difficulty at this point? I don't even know how, where to begin answering that. Um, it feels like I could write a blog post or talk for another 45 minutes. Um, why don't we take that one offline? We'll definitely get back to you. We may even get Janet to write a blog post about it. Because it's definitely a really interesting question around you know, how to make sure that your product vision is in line um, and in line with everyone. Um, we may even do a webinar about that, Fleur. I've just thought, how to, you know, how to align your product vision with the rest of your team. Um, I think it's a good one. Thank you, um, Mark and Dre. Uh, I, yeah, definitely something that uh, we will we will explore. I just had a thought of, hey, webinar. Let's get Jana on it. <laughs> so whoever was asking for Jana earlier. Cool. Um, well, that's everything. We've answered all your questions. Uh, thank you for getting involved, by giving us ideas for new webinars. So uh, that's it from us. If you have any further questions, please do drop us an email at hello at prodpad or tweet us. We're all very chatty and we'll be quick to respond. Otherwise, the recording will be sent through next week and have a good weekend and enjoy the World Cup if you're watching it, because I am. <laughs> My teams are playing right now, so I'm probably going to go watch it. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks for attending. Uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.